Do 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 Monkey pushes the button. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get into character. Ooh, 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 ooh. Monkey push button. Click. Click. Pay me money. Monkey push button. Zoom. Monkey push button. Click. <laughs> I'm actually making a point here. And this video is going to be called Transcending the Shutter Release. Transcending the Shutter. This, this little button up here. This is what every stupid person in the world thinks of photographers. Now there are, let's be honest here, and I've seen them in action. There are more than a few photographers that are paid by stupid people, and they're never paid twice, and they're not recommended. That That's all they do. They charge you money. Oh, monkey push button. Monkey push button. <laughs> Someone should make a, a gif out of that one. Um, you actually have to transcend the Shutter Release button. Here's a fact, and everybody that's taken my advice on this, I even had two people in the live stream today, I took your advice on that, now I've got uh, two uh, jobs uh, for uh, product photography. I uh, showed people some of my photographs, told them I'd, I'd, I got into a product photography, I got some lighting equipment you recommended, now I've got good paying jobs. Seriously, I'm not making this up, there'll be people commenting below, it's like, yep, I'm one of those guys. Transcending the shutter release, but people say, well, there's no money in photography. If you're a monkey pushing the shutter release button, you're going to be competing with every other idiot out there that's got a pile of expensive camera gear. Well, I've got really expensive camera Yeah, but you know what to do with it. You know, real photography is about not pushing the shutter release button, but knowing about lighting ratios. Lighting, knowing the distinction between shadows, midtones, and highlights. Um, knowing the zone system, where to actually place the shadows. Knowing what to expose for. Are you exposing for the shadows? Did you... What are you doing? Do you know about sensor saturation, composition? Do you know about post-production? These are really, there's only four sections, ultimately, four ultimate sections that you need to concentrate most of your attention on. And it's lighting control, because, well, this is lighting. Yeah, sticking a honeycomb on it or sticking some barn doors on it and knowing where to place it. That, girlfriend, is what we call lighting control. And I'll make a quick analogy here while I'm doing this. Because everybody thinks, well, and I've, I've said this a thousand times. Photography, which would you rather have? A crappy camera and good lighting? Or a really awesome camera and lens and no lighting? Because you could do a lot more with a crap camera and lens and some good lighting. Meaning some cheap lighting. Than you can with a really expensive uh, camera and lens. Well, I got, real, I got the best. I got, I got a, uh, a Zeiss Otis. And a Nikon D850. Yeah, you know what I got? I got a Nikon D5500, uh, a kit lens, and three speed lights with honeycombs. Lighting, lighting control. Lighting, bam! I'm going to point this right at your face if you're the subject. Yeah, I don't know. Lighting. Lighting is step one. Lighting control, step two. Lighting ratios, step three. Knowing where to place the lighting. Light sculpting. Step four, learning the difference between shadows, midtones, and highlights. Step five. Step six and ten is the nuances thereof, which include layering of light, light layering, that double L. These four things, which are about and encompass transcending the shutter release button, so you're not monkey push shutter button, click, so you can transcend that is where all the money in photography is. If you can do that, you will instantly separate yourself out from everybody else. You'll be making money. You'll end up with so many jobs that you will start cussing and complaining. I swear to God, if I'm lying, I'm dying. This is infallible, 100%, unless you like live in some place where there's absolutely no money and everybody's starving to death. It is undeniable that if you transcend the shutter release button and learn these four important things, lighting control, post-production, professionalism and reliability, and obviously number four doesn't really count. There's really only three is don't take crap jobs like wedding jobs and giving your stuff away for free. Just learn lighting control 
and uh, post-production and uh, your professionalism, like showing up on time, being consistent, you know, actually uh, having uh, your CODB's percentages set, which is cost over doing business. You have the parameters set of what you need to do. Of course, that's just part about being a good business person and conducting yourself professionally and obviously um, with reliability so people can recommend you. Once you get a couple of people recommending you, you'll just end up with more jobs than you know how to handle. I've had a lot of people tell me that they've now got too much work and they have to start turning down jobs. And the reason why that occurs is because their professionalism, they're learning lighting control, and uh, it's not about pressing the shutter release button. Post-production, of course, is a huge part of it. I mean, people that are complaining about uh, the $10 a month for the Creative Cloud subscription to Lightroom or Photoshop, I mean, that's, that's chump change if you're actually doing paid-for photography. What the hell is $10 a month? That's cheaper than a Netflix subscription. People that are bitching about Lightroom Photoshop costs are not people that are doing paid for photography. And that's fine. It's like, hey, I'm a hobbyist. I don't want to pay these idiots at uh, Adobe $10 a month. Well, I, I understand that. But if you're getting paid to do actual photography, nobody that nobody gives a shit about that. I mean, that's, 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 that's chump change. Well, what the hell are you complaining about? Um, lighting control. Get yourself a good, a good uh, couple three-speed lights. Get yourself uh, some filters. I actually had the magnets on backwards there. Uh, get yourself a uh, a radio trigger or two. Everything is about redundancy. Obviously, if you got a great camera and lens, you got all the lighting, and you're editing your shots. This isn't the computer that I do my editing on. I edit on a a, a new, much newer 27-inch iMac. 5K display. I mean, if you're editing your shots on some sort of old crappy RGB display, it might be time to start saving up. It's like, well, these pictures look good to me. It's like, okay, you got a really expensive camera lens system and good lighting and your composition and lighting are great, but you're doing post-production editing on some piece of crap monitor that has not been calibrated, or if it has been calibrated, it was calibrated a long, a long time ago, and people are like, these colors look off. Is well, they look good on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> the importance of monitor calibration, or at the very least, you know, having a good monitor. Yeah. This is one of the things, lazy, you know. I don't believe in working hard. I believe in working smarter. One of the great things, and it doesn't make me an Apple fanboy, one of the reasons why so many uh, photographers edit their stuff on iMacs is uh, the necessity for, uh, for uh, monitor calibration is next to nil. It's not nil, but... It's nothing to really seriously worry about. You still need to worry about it, but not as much as you think. It's a lot easier, and it's, uh, yeah. Get a decent display. Get a nice, you want to get an ISO? The real professional answer if you're a Windows user, just get an ISO display. There's really only three uh, displays uh, for professional uh, photographic editing, but having a professional display, and you know, you could have the most expensive medium format camera in the world, the best lenses and the best lighting, the best composition, and then you go to edit them on some sort of crap monitor that's not been calibrated, and the colors are off, and grandma's skin tones looks like she's a purple alien. You know, nobody wants to pay for that. Or if they do, they'll only pay you once. It's like, grandma's skin looks purple. This guy said he had a medium format camera and he was professional, but grandma looks purple. I said, like, yeah, because he's got really professional camera gear, but he doesn't realize that uh, the first part of digital photography is digital. And it requires a good display for post-production editing. People will always forget that. They'll, they, only, uh, they won't have uh, redundant cards. They won't have a good monitor. They won't have uh, data backups. It's amazing that the, uh, the loophole... Uh, people that do this... It's like what, uh, uh, there's some burglars that would go around scoping houses for a TV show. They're ex-burglars. And like, look at that guy. He's got like a billion locks on the front door and his professional thick door, but the window's open. It's like, you just crawl in the window. You don't need to go through the door, which is like, you know, sealed up tighter than Fort Knox. The window's open. People do this in photography. They'll have the best camera gear, the best lenses, and incredible lighting. And they'll have a crap monitor, no backup redundancy, because redundancy is God. No backup redundancy. Um, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's literally like leaving the back door open on your, uh, 
on you know, your house with a professional alarm system and you know tons of locks on the front door. So, well, that's that's not any good. It's an entire ecosystem of uh, of uh, there's crazy cats outside. I could hear them outside. Uh, entire ecosystem of uh, photographic uh, post-production. Not only of uh, the photography itself, which of course includes photographic equipment, but post-production. What, what good is it if you have crap input? I mean, excuse me, uh, gold input but crap output. Well, these pictures were taken on the... Uh, I did a wedding shoot today. What did you use? Uh, I used a new GFX 102 megapixel Fujifilm camera with, you know, the super awesome Fujifilm lenses, some professional lighting. The composition is really good. I even used a color checker passport for color calibration. And, uh, yeah, I, I got backup card redundancy. And what, what did you edit that? Uh, I used my old 2002... <laughs> RGB display. Um, I'm not about spending money, but I mean, you got the high-end camera gear, but you're looking at it on some crummy display. It's, I don't know, it's like a, a person with cataracts looking at a, at a masterpiece of Leonardo da Vinci or Pablo Picasso. It's like, well, you got the awesomeness there, but the image can't be properly processed or appreciated. And it certainly can't be professionally edited. Well, I got the best high-resolution medium format digital file, r digital raw files in the world, but I'm going to edit them on my uncalibrated crap monitor. You know, I don't talk about it enough, but here's another statement. Why is it that none of these photography channels, and I can't remember the last time one of them did, talked about how incredibly important it is to have the proper tools for post-production editing. It is not important. It's not very important. It's insanely important. You know, you'll spend like $2,000 on that Zeiss Otis lens, which is actually more than $2,000, depending on which one it is. More than $2,000. But you won't spend like two grand on like a professional ISO uh, photo editing monitor? What the hell is up with that? That's not right. That's called having uh, bass backwards priorities. But uh, transcending the shutter release button is incredibly important. You gotta get the lighting, and you gotta learn lighting control, and then you gotta learn placement to the lighting control, such that you're controlling the ratios of where your shadows and midtones and highlights fall. I mean, it's incredibly important. That's all real professional photography is. That, and of course, your own professionalism. Once you do that, you've tr transcended the shutter release button, which is everybody else with a bunch of expensive camera gear that doesn't know how to use it. Look at me, I got an expensive camera lens. <laughs> Monkey press shutter release button, click, pay me, pay me. It's like, why? Because I can do this. This really, camera's really expensive, not this one, but click. <laughs> I was going to pay you for that. I could do that with my iPhone. Whew. Did I make my point perfectly clear in this video? Let me know if I didn't. I'm absolutely guaranteed, talking to myself here now, that I did make myself perfectly clear in this video. By the way, this video is sponsored by one of the things I love the most, pure, uh, unadulterated sunflower butter. This is Trader Joe's sunflower butter. It's only got two ingredients, the sunflower seeds and salt. It doesn't have sugar and other sort of crazy-ass chemical crap in there. Just sunflower seeds and a little bit of salt. A little bit. Not much, just a little bit. And oh my God. <sighs> God. Man, when I end this video, I'm going to go on this thing. On the sunflower butter like a pervert in a porn shop. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is good. Really good. You should buy some. Especially if you got a Trader Joe's somewhere near you. <clears throat> and by the way, Whole Foods sucks. It is a hippie hangout where Harry, with the uh, obnoxiously rude chicks with hairy armpits. <laughs> I hate Whole Foods. The place sucks. It's overpriced, and everybody that works there is rude. Really, really rude. Thank you. Have a good evening. Looks veritas. If you like these videos, please click the link below. Tell me how much you love these videos or hate them, whatever. Yeah.